<laughs> wow, can a crate, can a room crave a space? A what? I don't know. Oh, okay. Can I say stimulation? Is that weird or stimulation? Stimulation. <laughs> Feel less. What? Oh, less. Yes. Long pause for dramatics. That's the end of that. When it comes to painting, I understand it can be very overwhelming to pick a color. I can also bet money that someone came up to you and was like, what can I help you find? And you looked them dead in the eye and said, it's all good. I know exactly what I'm looking for. When in reality, you absolutely have no idea. Over the course of my career, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly when it came to paint colors. And throughout it all, I've learned a thing or two about what looks best in certain spaces. This brings us to today's video where we're gonna talk about the worst and the best color options for your bedroom. Your bedroom is honestly a sanctuary. You spend more time in here than you think you do and it's used in a number of different ways or you could say activities. So it should really reflect your style and have a certain level of intimacy and comfort. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting before, my name is Phoenix Gray, AKA Design Daddy. And on this channel, we discuss all things interior design. So regardless if you're renting or own, I'm here to help. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Mr. Phoenix Gray, where you can see all my daily design advice videos. And you can also join my free design newsletter in the description box below, where I answer all of the most commonly asked interior design questions you may have. This is also just a quick disclaimer as color is a very personal subject. And if you love one or more of the colors that I mentioned not to use, please don't take it to heart. I'm just here to give you my professional guidance and really allow you to make your informed decision Decision. At the end of the day, ultimately it's up to you because it's your home, not mine. But let's be real, you came here to learn from Design Daddy, so I'm sorry, not sorry. We're gonna start with the worst color options for your bedroom, but listen up. This just isn't because I do not like these personally. These colors have proven psychologically to link different energy levels to how you feel personally. So don't argue with me, you're arguing with science. 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 Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, Bill, Bill. <laughs> So first on the chopping block is white. Yeah, Mr. White. While white you'd think would be your go-to choice that works essentially everywhere, there are actually some drawbacks I want you to keep in mind to consider before actually choosing this for a bedroom. This shade has the reputation of sometimes feeling stark and clinical, which lacks all warmth and coziness that many people desire in an actual bedroom. It's also been said that bright white in a bedroom lacks the level of warmth that this space really craves. Wow, can a crate, can a room crave a space? Yes. Can a room crave, a, yeah, we're just going with that. <laughs> Much like the rest of the colors on this list, this is a very bright white. A what? I don't know. A bright what? A bright white? Oh, did I say bright what? Oh, I said bright what? You said bright right. Oh, okay. A very bright white can feel rigid and uninspiring, especially in a room where you want it to create a soothing and restful atmosphere. And I know some of you are gonna be like, Phoenix, the lights are off in your bedroom. You're not gonna see the color, blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you, when you walk into the room where the light's on, you see the color. That is going to change your perception, even if the lights are off, once you've gotten into the actual bedroom itself and you're under the covers and the lights are off. White, honestly, it gives you nothing. I've seen so many people choose a neutral white that ends up not being neutral at all, so please keep that in mind. Your bedroom ends up looking like a hospital waiting room, bright and stark, which is the last thing you want, and I will continue to say it. Going for that all white look can really lack visual depth and interest, and we all saw the Kim Kardashian video that's gone viral with her monochromatic bedroom that just everything is lacking. It's giving nothing. And it literally has no variation of color, texture, or pattern. Even though the room can feel monotonous, it really has a sterile look to it. While white is typically associated with the idea of purity and like cleansingness, as they say, going for this in your bedroom really lacks emotional warmth. Bedrooms are spaces where you seek this idea of emotional comfort and overly stark white environment could be less conducive to actually fostering these feelings. And if I can give you any tip, it would be to get off Pinterest with these inspo pics for the perfect white room. The perfect white 
does not exist unless you're just putting paper on your walls. There are so many undertones and the complex mixtures that lead to what whites we actually use. So if you want a full breakdown on white, I could literally go all day talking about it. So let me know in the comments below if you want a video on just the specifics of white. Now that we have that covered, we're gonna go into actual colors since white is technically a shade and I know someone's gonna fight me on it. But red is an emotionally charge and highly stimulating color. But when present in a bedroom, it often has its own set of challenges that we're gonna go over. It just sucks, just don't do it, that's it. That's the end of that. The intensity and passion that red gives off can really be ideal in certain situations, but in a bedroom, the vibrancy of it can really energize you more and hinder your ability to actually unwind and fall asleep. I understand that individual experience and cultural associations with red can really vary so widely, but some people that might associate red with love and passion, others are probably gonna associate with warning signs or caution, so keep that in mind. These personal associations can really influence how you feel in the space itself. The range of stimulation varies. Can I say stimulation? Is that weird? Or stimulation? Stimulation. <laughs> Red envelops excitement on one end and aggression on the other, and a bedroom is meant to be tranquil, and this emotional intensity is a lot to handle. If you want that intensity, it can really amplify it, but at the same time, remember, it's not going to be for every person to feel the same. Red also has a small space perception, meaning it visually reduces the size of a room, and most bedrooms are already small to begin with, so using red extensively might actually exacerbate the feeling of compactness. That was a mouthful. That's what she said. Yellow is another really tough one because it really is such a happy color, but like the rest of these, in its pure bright form can really be overwhelming and create a level of glare, which can be uncomfortable and almost headache inducing. When I first moved into my bedroom, I had this bright yellow and pink accent hue everywhere. And let me just tell you, I have been personally victimized by it and I can say I'm biased and have hatred towards this color. How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by bright yellow and pink accent? Even though yellow, I understand, is very much of the time associated with positivity and happiness, it is also known to evoke feelings of restlessness or even anxiety in some individuals, especially in its intense shades. And no, I'm not making this up because I have a personal vendetta. While yellow can sometimes work well as an accent color or even in specific design themes, it might be challenging to actually coordinate with other colors and design the elements in a bedroom overall. Finding complementary colors that balance with the brightness of yellow while promoting relaxation are a challenge and they end up looking even more intensified in the space. The color really does have a sense of liveliness and really it can create a dynamic atmosphere, but it contradicts the calmness that you need in a bedroom. If you really love yellow and you really want to incorporate it into your room, I would recommend at least a pale pastel shade of it so it feels more subtle and less distracting. As I've said before, I want you to keep in mind the psychological effects and emotional attachments that really relate to a mood and really dictate how we feel and react in a space. The goal in a room is to have this visual contrast that really makes a space feel like it's thoughtfully designed without clashing color combinations. It can really feel more jarring and quite upsetting in a bedroom setting upsetting in a bedroom setting. Please keep this in mind when you're looking at colors to really have that juxtaposition. I want you to avoid the clashiness and the high contrast from side by side. The visual discord they create really makes a room feel less visually pleasing and less inviting as a result. And when I say uninviting, I mean for you. Unless you want it to have that space where you know, you actually want your visitors to leave, then by all means have one of these jarring colors because they are in fact going to want to leave. Neon colors are extremely vibrant and intense and that comes once again with a lot of energy. They're really great for grabbing your attention and can really create a strong visual impact in room, but in a bedroom where that goal is to promote relaxation and rest, such intense colors really have the opposite effect of overstimulating the senses. The bright and flashy colors of neons can really make it difficult for your own mind to settle down, leading to a huge sense of restlessness. And even with the lights off in the dark, they still have the capability of really reflecting light around the room and it makes it feel less dark. Feel less, what? Oh, less, yes. 
On the other side, constant exposure to bright neon lights can really lead to visual fatigue over time. In any situation, I want you to keep in mind to really avoid those in general. The intense contrast and the saturation of these colors can strain your eyes, leading to a lot of discomfort, to really making you feel like your eyes are squinting or you're tired most of the time. But visually tiring, that's all it's gonna do. It's gonna make you wanna stay in the room less. And the only way I would say this works is if you have a child and you want to get them up bright in the morning. A neon color will definitely assure that they are awake at the time the sun is up because the light reflecting around the room is quite intense. Bear with me because I'm gonna give you a quick science lesson here even though I have no science background. But once again, sticking to the cliff notes. The human body's natural sleep-wake cycle is known as the circadian rhythm. Basically, this circadian rhythm is heavily influenced by light, and bright neon colors really emit a lot of light energy. And excessive exposure to these colors, especially during the evening or night, can interfere with your body to really produce melatonin. This is what they call the dream hormone, in hindsight. It helps you regulate the sleep, and honestly, once you get older, your body gives up. Like mine, I don't even think I produce any melatonin anymore. I need some sort of drug or some type of melatonin pill to actually sleep most nights because my body just does not shut off. So if you're having trouble falling asleep and staying asleep, it might be because the light is affecting your body to produce enough hormones to actually fall and stay asleep. Now that we have the science out of the way, designing a bedroom really relies on the combination of the two things that create a sense of harmony and relaxation. So I'm talking about soft, muted, and even harmonious harmonious color palettes are usually used to have that effective creating look to have a restful environment for your bedroom. This is what's going to segue us into our last and final best color option that can work in your bedroom. I would have to admit that I am quite biased and heavily lean towards a dark and moody bedroom always for at least me personally and my clients because it adds such a level of intimacy that most bedrooms lack. But fear not, I'm going to give you my best choices that also allow you to include more muted color pastel options for those who would prefer a lighter bedroom tone that are afraid of the dark. Afraid of the dark colors. Afraid of the dark. Either way. Starting the list off strong with blue being one of my favorite colors. Blue is often associated with this idea of calmness, tranquility, and relaxation, which is exactly what we're going for in a bedroom. This color does not just create a sense of serenity, but it also, from a psychological standpoint, blue has been scientifically shown to lower your heart rate and reduce anxiety. I think this is why I use so much blue in my home, maybe because I'm trying to make myself feel better. But regardless, it works, I can speak from it personally. Having a biophilic connection often helps promote relaxation with the reference of nature, and blue being associated with water really creates that connection to invoke a sense of rejuvenation and relaxation, ultimately enhancing the overall ambience of your bedroom style and color. Blue, in my professional and personal opinion, is a timeless color that honestly transcends any trends. It's unlikely to feel outdated and out of style, ensuring that your bedroom design or even any room that you use it in stays relevant without you feeling like you need to update it. That being said, blue also comes in a wide range of shades from pale baby blue to deep navy. Lighter blues can really have that sense of airiness and have that open feeling, while darker hues are going to give you more of that instant level of intimacy and coziness. Blue also pairs well with so many different colors and it gives you much more versatility when it comes to designs that really aren't limited to a specific preset set of colors in the space. Colors have always influence our moods and how we feel in environments. And much like blue, green has the capability to reduce stress and has a more positive outcome than the other ones we've looked at to avoid. It's so funny, when I made this video on TikTok, I had so many comments and friends of the were like, shit, I'm just going to paint like everything in my home blue and green and hope that it's gonna reduce my anxiety and stress. So if you end up doing that to your entire space, let me know because I want to hear about it. From a soft sage to a deep forest hue, these shades emulate the outdoors, promoting as this sense of almost calmness and connection, which is always a bonus in my books. Green is often linked to feelings of health and well being, and if you really want to look into it, money. money. And in a bedroom where rejuvenation is paramount, I will always prioritize creating an atmosphere that encourages relaxation and recuperation. Green aligns 
perfectly with this goal for a bedroom. I've probably said this a hundred times in this video alone, but your space is meant to facilitate relaxation, well-being, and a peaceful night's sleep, which I get is really hard some days, but you'd be surprised with the power of color and in your space how it can really help with that. So hear me out on this one, because when I told people before about this, not many people were on board, but I have my reasoning, so trust me here. Terracotta has the capability of creating such an emotional, supportive environment. Its charm really ensures the style of a bedroom will remain relevant with that timeless approach that is very similar to that green and blue. And unlike any other color, Terracotta is the perfect balance between a warm and a cool tone, which makes it such a harmonious choice that can pair with so many different complementary shades. So if you're unsure on how to coordinate colors, Terracotta can go warm or cool depending on what you pair with it. So you're not stuck actually between choosing a cool or a warm palette. You can have something that's versatile and works with both. I know it doesn't sound like Terracotta is a typically warm tone, but look how well it pairs with the warm and the cool tones. In these pictures, references, you can really see how the palettes have such a capability of being flexible. Terracotta's earthy undertone creates an immense sense of coziness, like I mentioned before, but it also has the power to envelop the bedroom in a really comfortable embrace, making it the perfect color for really fostering an almost warm and cozy atmosphere. Just like the other colors I mentioned that are on the best options, this link to nature really creates a grounding and almost comfortable atmosphere that we may not understand emotionally. If you do end up choosing a terracotta, I will always recommend committing to the entire room to color just everything. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the same effect if you were to just do an accent wall, but the added dramatics of bringing this terracotta in the entire room and even doing the ceiling, trust me, is so well worth it. So I'm going to redeem myself here because I'm sure I'm going to get bashed in the comments for being anti-white paint. I know I'm going to end up on some forum of these takes, so let me rephrase. White is an excellent option for the bedroom, but not a bright white. So hear me out. I'm going to explain a little bit more in depth here. If you go for more of that neutral with a little bit of warmth to it, trust me, you are going to have the Design Daddy stamp of approval. Otherwise, we need to chat. Warm white serves as an excellent neutral backdrop that pairs so seamlessly with almost any color out there. So if you're not a color person, fear not because you don't have to make that commitment to a color. That warm, soft white is so great and it will really do wonders for the entire space. The reason why I suggest a warm white over a cooler one is because it can really evoke that sense of softness and gentleness, unlike a color that's gonna be more impactful in how you feel. This is a much more subtle approach to a cozy and relaxed environment and it gives off almost that quiet luxury vibe because it's not really how it looks, it's how it feels. Natural and artificial light in a room is enhanced by warm white as well. So unlike its cooler counterparts, because the reflections of light play in the overall look. In my previous video, I talked about the right Kelvin rating and the right bulbs, and when paired with the right color, it enhances it even more. So if you need to, you can always reference that video. If you still want to remain on that neutral look without falling under that monochromatic flat look, this color is the best because it really allows you to focus on the textures and layering in a space without the distraction of bolder colors. Tactile elements, I've said before and I will say again, I always like to repeat myself, they are really important when you go for a neutral look because it gives you that desired level of coziness without having the tones of color to provide that really rely on it. Plus a warm neutral like this really allows you to incorporate pops of color patterns or even unique decor elements that reflect your personal style and preferences that once again are not bold to really distract from the overall look. As I've said many times before, color is very emotional and where some people love it, other people have a less positive reaction to it. If you do end up choosing a color that is on my list to avoid or you do have a color that elicits an emotional feeling that is less ideal for a bedroom and you still really want to use it, this is what I want you to do. Do it in pastel. You can really choose almost any shade but have the subtle muted approach to it that really gives you a sense of gentleness and tranquility. The lighter shades of color, regardless of which direction you go, really allowed you to have that muted version that has a calming effect to your mind while still plays to the relaxation of the space because we are not overstimulating or overpowering our senses with an intense hue. 
Just like warm white, pastels also reflect light. So with the right amount, it can really make a space feel airier without being overwhelming or overly bright, as well as really having the versatility of pairing with harmonious color palettes. Our personal emotional needs are sometimes often forgotten about in the bedroom because most people just start with an inspiration image online and go from there. Pastels can really elicit feelings of comfort and nostalgia while allowing for a more serene background to really allow textures and materials in your space to highlight the overall design instead of the color. Ugh. My God, okay, that was a lot of information. I get it, I feel like it was a lot. I know it can feel a little overwhelming. There is a lot to unpack with color in general and I could honestly go on so much further. So if you do choose a color, just make sure that it's important to you. It is ultimately your choice, but I want you to have the idea of promoting relaxation and comfort in the space. The colors that I've chosen really create an environment that supports rest and rejuvenation, allowing you to fully unwind and prepare for a good night's sleep. I also feel like I could do a whole video on color theory in your space, so let me know in the comments below if I should do another video specifically on that because I could talk for days. I really hope this was helpful in really choosing the best color option for your bedroom or even a paint color for your home. So let me know what your bedroom color currently is because I wanna know if it's gonna pass the Design Daddy approval list. But please, make sure to like this video and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok for all my daily design advice and Mr. Phoenix Gray. And remember, if you're ever questioning yourself, just ask, what would Design Daddy do? Boom.